it. It's hard to believe that one year after the release of Aliens Colonial Marines, a game that didn't overly release too positive reviews or feedback or what well, we, we already know my thoughts on the game. Oh Jesus! Oh God! Oh! Oh Jesus! God! Oh Mary! Mother of Jesus! Jesus of Nazareth! But one year after Colonial Marines, we got without a doubt the best alien game to ever release as well as one of the best survival horror games too, in my opinion, with Alien Isolation. A game so horrifying, beautiful and unique that it had me dreading to return to it, and I'll get back to that later, but also Alien Isolation released at the perfect time and I think it did wonders for the Alien franchise. Seriously? Yeah. But seeing as a load of you loved my Aliens Colonial Marines 10 years later review, I thought I'd do the same thing with Alien Isolation, which is now a 10 year old game, and with Alien Romulus coming out soon, a movie that, like Isolation, is set between 1979's Alien and 1986's Aliens, I thought why not go back and take a look at this masterfully made Alien game. Ah! Well, what's the matter? What the hell is that? A killer robot monster? Now, without a doubt, if you've not played Alien Isolation before, you've seen something about it. Whether it's a Let's Play video of streamers freaking out or some speed running challenges, or maybe you've heard about the IGN review that they got so horribly wrong. One more thing, Eugene, give me that. If I ever find one of these lying around again, I swear to fucking God, I will stop being so polite. Get the fuck out of my sight before I demolish you. Developed by Creative Assembly, the developers behind the Total War series, yet these guys made a survival horror game and nailed it, and published by Sega, the House of Sonic, Alien Isolation released back in October 2014 to positive reviews by fans and critics except IGN, but rather than an action-like shooter like Colonial Marines or the beloved AVP franchise, Alien Isolation draws 90% of its inspiration from the original Alien movie including its gameplay. Oh, yeah, that's one fine looking barbecue pit. Why doesn't mine look like that? Ah! But why should you play Alien Isolation? Or hell, maybe why should you replay it? Well, it is the best Alien game in general, and sorry to Alien Resurrection fans on PlayStation, but well, why is it the best? That's a bloody outrage it is! Well, let's take a look and also, heads up, I'll avoid major story spoilers in this video as I really think this is a game that you need to play and experience for yourself, but there might be some minor story plot points here and there, so heads up you've been warned on that account. The story of Alien Isolation takes place between the first and second movie in the series. Sigourney Weaver's Ellen Ripley has experienced the alien already. It tore its way through the crew of the Nostromo, she then blows up the Nostromo, she defeats the alien by shooting it out of the airlock, and then goes into cryosleep awaiting rescue. Hey, 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 come on, come on, I haven't seen it yet! Cut to 15 years later where we play as Amanda Ripley, the daughter of Sigourney Weaver's character Ellen Ripley, and Amanda is, understandably, searching for her missing mother, and has followed in her mother's footsteps by taking a job with Wayland Yutani, and working out in deep space just to try and find some evidence of what happened to her mum. Not mother? Well, Amanda gets word that the flight recorder of the Nostromo has been found and is currently at Sevastopol Station, a supply station, and seeing as the Nostromo was company property by Wayland Utani, they want that property back and have offered Amanda some closure on what happened to her mother. Amanda gets invited to go collect the flight recorder on the courier ship, the Torrens, but when we arrive at Sevastopol Station, it's mysteriously quiet, the station has taken some damage so the Torrens can't actually dock into the station. On top of that too, their communications aren't working correctly, so we actually end up walking out of the Torrens into space to investigate Sevastopol Station. Where nothing can possibly go wrong. As you'd expect though, things don't go down too well. We arrive at the station and we've separated from our team, and we find that humans are hostile and freaking out, power scarcely works, service robots have malfunctioned, in a way, 
And yes, there is an alien on board. Uh, possibly go wrong. <laughs> that's the first thing that's ever gone wrong. From here, we try to figure out what happened on Sevastopol Station, but our first priority is finding the flight recorder, which, minus spoiler alert, so heads up, the flight recorder has been corrupted, so now, well, Amanda still doesn't find out what happened to her mother, Ellen Ripley, and we're stuck on Sevastopol with an alien. Mother? No, this isn't your mother. That mother? Now, it's a pretty cool premise for a game, yeah? But what makes Alien Isolation stand out from other alien games? Well, firstly, Isolation is an alien game, not an aliens game. So there's no shooting your way through hordes of xenomorphs. While yes, there are guns and there's a motion tracker, they're not overly used for combat, but I'll get back to this more a bit later. Instead, you'll be hiding, sneaking, doing your best to survive through the horrors that is on Sevastopol Station. Now, just like any other survival horror game, you'll need to craft items, keep a track of how many, say, noisemakers or flares or batteries for your flashlight that you have, as the AI for the alien is something that can be truly magnificent. What Alien Isolation does with its general gameplay will immediately fill you with anxiety, and that's because the gameplay is not fast. Like, at all. Using items like computers or rewiring terminals or hacking into doors takes time. So much time that it leaves you exposed for being seen by enemies and vulnerable. For example, early on in the game you get basically a giant wrench that's used to open locked doors with a giant lock. And to open the doors you need to break the padlock and then attach the wrench and then turn the giant bolt all of which requires you, the player, to input certain buttons that leaves you exposed for longer. It's sort of like when you watch a horror movie and you can see survivors like fumble for their car keys. I mean, everything in the game requires you, the player's input, from opening doors, using computers, to priming power supplies, they all kind of pale in comparison though to how the save system works in this game. Now, just like in Resident Evil and its typewriters, Alien Isolation has save stations. Now, these are remote stations that make a unique beeping noise, giving you, the player, the heads up that, hey, there's an area to save the game up ahead and maybe take a breather. However, unlike Resident Evil though, save stations aren't in safe rooms. They're out in the open and save stations will warn you if there are hostiles nearby. Is the sound of a thousand terrible things heading this way. But best or worst, or depending on your preference really, but save stations are not immediate. Amanda needs to insert her ID card into the save station and the system needs to beep and register that you're saving the game, but what it's doing is giving you a saving system that actually requires time for you to actually save the game by artificially dragging it out, leaving you exposed. How long is this going to take? What's great too and happened to me was while I was saving the game beeps and stops saying the game's ready to be saved and right at that point the alien dropped from the ceiling behind me and thankfully you can cancel out of a save because if you save while the alien's right behind you you're going to load when the alien's right behind you. But as I just mentioned, and as many of you probably know, with save stations is, well, that's where you respawn or you restart the game from when you die, and trust me, you will die. So if you save the game with the alien behind you, that's how you restart in the game. Thankfully though, you can opt to reload from a previous save in case this happens. But that may mean that you have to replay your way through any challenges you just did because you're loading a previous save. Now, as survival horror games go, you do get access to some weapons, though by no means is Alien Isolation a overall shooter. Now, you start off with a revolver, and it will do no damage to the alien, and is more so used for taking out some of these SIGs and androids, or any survivors on Sevastopol Station. You'll also have noisemakers to distract the alien, you've got flares and pipe bombs and medkits, and all sorts of survival options and gear. Now, it's worth noting the alien cannot be killed and the pistol will do nothing to it besides alerting the alien to where you're hiding. But you can cause the alien to flee, giving you a few moments before it returns by using the flamethrower. 
Now, the flamethrower will chew through fuel quicker than Disney churns out bad ideas, but if the alien charges at you and you've got fuel, you'll burn it, causing it to flee and run off into the vents. But the alien will return to where it saw you last and will actively start hunting you. I can smell you. And I think that's where the AI of the alien, I think, starts to come into play, with the alien being pretty damn smart, and it will get smarter the higher the difficulty that you play the game on. No shit. If you're being quiet and avoid getting seen, the alien will overall look for you and search the area, but if you're making no noise or survivors of the station aren't trying to shoot at you, the alien will search, get bored, and then run into vents to search elsewhere in the station. However, if the alien has seen you or you burn it with a flamethrower, I feel like it then starts to actively hunt you and I found it's less likely to get bored and run off into the vents. The alien is obviously alerted to noise such as gunfire, explosions, noisemakers, your character yelling Fuck! as well as sprinting and you can't outrun the alien. Sprinting is a last resort to break line of sight from the alien or enemies in general. However, you do have something to not only track the alien, but also help with navigating the massive Sevastopol station, and that's the motion tracker. That's probably one of the very few things that has been pulled from aliens than alien, and the motion tracker is exactly what you think it is. It tracks movement from aliens, seeks and robots, survivors, and mov movement in general, but it also works as a directional tool for where you should go for your next objective with this little line that circles around the tracker. But a first-person survival horror game is only as good as its environments and sound design. And Alien Isolation smashes this out of the park. If you've played Alien Isolation or watched a heap of playthroughs, well, you know how damn good this game is. Steam will come from the vents, the doors make that humming and thumbing noise that they make from the movies, the game too is sometimes just eerily quiet. Sure, there is a music and score to the game, but there are moments where the only thing you hear is Amanda breathing or the beeping and clicking of computers. It doesn't feel like you're playing a game set in the Alien universe, you actually feel like you're physically in the game. Now, what I mean by that is when playing Aliens Colonial Marines, it felt like I was playing an Aliens game. And if you checked out that video, you know that I actively had to roleplay in that game to get some kind of enjoyment out of it. While the atmosphere was fine, the gameplay was and the story and characters were, again, we know my thoughts, but it felt like playing a mediocre Aliens game. Alien Isolation though, I feel like you get more involved and immersed the more you play. When you first get control of Amanda, you wake up from a sleeping pod and you need to change into clothes and you get to explore the Torrens, which is the courier ship that's taking you to Sevastopol. But before you actually arrive to Sevastopol Station and having to avoid the alien, you simply just get to explore the ship at your own leisure and the details are really impressive. As you get to Sevastopol Station and seeing the aftermath of an alien breakout, the environments with body bags and graffiti, destroyed ceiling tiles, blood dripping, it kind of feels like, yes, not only an alien movie, but it reminded me a bit of Dead Space. There are moments outside of the Sevastopol Station, one of which that acts like a flashback to how the alien got on board Sevastopol Station, and it's back down on LV-426, and this moment of the game was a real damn treat. Now, one of the gameplay or mechanics, or whatever you really want to call it, that I found that immersed me into this world was that Amanda physically has to do things. She has to burn through panels with a plasma torch. She has to climb a ladder. She has to slot her ID card into save stations, and we physically see her do this. If we look down, she's got legs, and when we're running or sprinting, even though we really shouldn't be because it alerts the alien, we can see her arms moving around, and I don't know, dude, it just kind of feel like I was experiencing this horror myself. Like, I really enjoy it in games when we can actually see our character or our player do things, rather than just climbing a ladder and it looks like we're just sliding up and down it. But what kind of blew me away with this immersion as well was the use of the motion tracker and Amanda's eyeline. Firstly, you have to actively bring up the motion tracker. If she's looking at the motion tracker, the background is blurry. But you do have an option to keep the motion tracker up, but to focus not on the tracker, but on the environments instead or the situation around you instead, 
making the motion tracker blurry, and it's just some really cool additions. Now sound design, it's brilliant. This was my third playthrough of Alien Isolation, and my first time doing some streams on Twitch with the lights off and a headset on, and holy crap. The screeching of the alien when you can hear it nearby, the footsteps when it's searching nearby rooms, the rushed banging of the vents of the alien just scuttling around, or the drool when it hits the floor and the alien's hissing as it's just waiting for you to walk under an open vent so it can grab you. But the sound design in Alien Isolation is also super important, especially for that like last act of the game. Without going into spoilers, yeah, you'll want to pay attention to the sound. But one of the greatest, and maybe again the worst depending on who you are, sound features of Alien Isolation is the game being able to register any microphones. Now, I remember playing this on my Xbox One, the original Xbox One, in my old apartment 10 years ago, and holy shit, I'm old, but I remember having this setting turn on that my Kinect would register sound. I was towards the end of the game just in front of a save station and my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, came home and with the standard honey I'm home, the Kinect heard this, so the alien heard this, and I died. So sound design, story, environments, immersion, anything else to add? Well, I'm not going to go into any story spoilers or anything, as honestly, I think this game is something that everyone needs to experience at least once, and replaying it every few years also feels pretty damn refreshing too. But it's the overall events of the story. I found Aliens Colonial Marine's story was pretty weak, and at the time it was at least canon, and it also felt kind of stupid. Which it is. However, the story here in Alien Isolation doesn't feel far-fetched. It doesn't feel like a bunch of bros sitting in a pub thinking of a way to save Michael Bean. It feels like a well-thought-out story that doesn't contradict or overly feel slapped together. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Alien Isolation expands in the Alien universe in a great way with Sigson, a competitor to Wayland yutani with their synthetics in The Average Joes who look like Kevin Bacon in Hollow Man. Fuck, that was a film. But when they pull latex over Kevin Bacon's face to sort of, to give him at that face mask. But the average Joes are also horrifying to look at with their glowing eyes that pierce through dark corridors. They've got no hair, a robotic voice, and no emotion. Now, Siegson have deliberately made their synthetics or robots not to look like humans, so you can tell the difference between a human and an average Joe. However, average Joes will flat kill people if they're in restricted areas while also offering help and assistance. Average Joes also won't assist you or any other survivors if the alien is hunting you and the alien does not give a crap about the working Joes. Hey, Bart. Hey. There are some issues with Alien Isolation, yeah sure, there were a few times I died from the alien from complete randomness. At one point I had a security camera spot what appears to be the alien hiding in a vent, which triggered an alarm, causing the alien to know exactly where I was. Now this might not be a issue, I just found it a little weird and just as well something worth noting. The third act of the game is pretty damn good but also horrifying and you'll be reloading saves pretty frequently at the end of the game as there are a lot of hazards. But well, Alien Isolation is a survival horror game and at the start of the second act, maybe halfway through the 10th or 11th mission or so, it does try to turn into a bit of a shooter. No, it's not like Call of Duty or Rainbow Six Siege, but you will have some androids that you'll face off against, and generally your best weapon are guns for taking on these androids, and you will have low ammo because it's survival horror game. While Alien Isolation has fantastic environments, the sound design is great, the average Joes are just creepy, and the alien is a big chap, the weird things are the cutscenes and the character designs. Character faces and cutscenes look like they've got no emotion sometimes, and some of them just have dead eyes. Some characters, yes, do look better than others a little, but I think the overall character models are starting to age a little bit. Medical's a no-go. We can't take her there. We have a basic life support unit back at HQ. Now, a nitpick or something I just wanted to mention overall is weapon damage to the alien. As I mentioned, the revolver does no damage to the alien, and from some gameplay footage, it looks like bullets just bounce off them. 
However, if you shoot a human in the head, then yeah, they're dead. But I also noticed, and again, it's just something I wanted to mention, but I saw after some survivors shot or would shoot at the alien, it leaves some blood behind and it's not burning through or doing anything, it's just green specks on walls and on the floor. Yeah, compared to the rest of the game, it, it is really nothing like at all, but it's something I thought was a bit weird. Or it could have been something that if you perhaps shot the alien or scared it off, that it could leave an acid trail of blood behind, or that if you used a shotgun to shoot the alien at close range, you could die from acid burn because you're standing too close to it. Let's see that in an instant replay. What the fuck happened? One final thing to note, and it's a bit of an annoyance, but it's the mission structure. The game will start off overall pretty simple in surviving a bit of Sevastopol Station, you find the flight recorder of the Nostromo, then it turns into finding medical supplies for an injured crew member, then going to the marshal's office, then do this, then do this, then do this. Each mission does link into each other, like you go from the medical bay, then you need to take the supplies from the medical bay to the marshal's office, where you've got an injured crew member that's being kept. But using the medical supplies as an early in-game example, you need to make your way to the hospital wing, which is pretty straightforward. But then you need to find a key card to get access to the patient's ward, and then you need to find the doctor's access key card, and then you need to find what room he was in in order to get that access card. And then you need to make your way to the emergency room to get the medical supplies, and then you need to enact emergency evacuations to have the doors open. It sort of just pads out the gameplay just a little. It's not overly a problem as the game is actually pretty damn good, I just forgot how frustrating it can get when you're constantly just thrown curveball after curveball after curveball. But if my main annoyance or my final note on this game is based around some of the mission structure, I don't think that's so much of a big deal. I know a lot of players loved the length of the story and how many challenges that Amanda goes through as the story continues. But why is Alien Isolation the best Alien game. Well, because it is. I understand some people love Fireteam Elite or they love Colonial Marines for the action aspect and that all links back to their personal favourite film of the franchise perhaps, and, and what a damn film Aliens is, but Isolation follows the original Alien as a premise and inspiration for surviving against a Xenomorph. Where the Alien isn't just another random piece of cannon fodder that makes an iconic squeal of pain when shot, there aren't a thousand of them that's just swarming you. It's sort of like that line from Jurassic World. They're dinosaurs, wow enough. And it kind of seems true for here too, like it's an alien, wow enough. But why is it also one of the best survival horror games, at least in my opinion? Well, because it doesn't slowly evolve into an action title. Unlike Resident Evil or Dead Space, I didn't find myself getting more powerful and cocky with my character. Like when you get the Lion Launcher in Dead Space or upgrade your weapons in Resident Evil, Lesser zombies or necromorphs aren't overly a challenge anymore, and to an extent, neither are some of the boss fights. You don't get access to more weapons that make threats a joke. At some point, kinda the opposite actually. The alien is a threat constantly, whether just roaming around in the vents or taking out other survivors, or it's just in the back of your mind when you're at a save station or using a terminal. You don't know where the alien is or what it's going to do. And with that, you had a constant sense of fear, especially any time I walked inside of a vent. But it's been 10 years since Alien Isolation, a game that not only challenged what an alien game can be, but maybe to what video game developers can do with a beloved and existing IP. Oh, shit. The team at Creative Assembly have made a fantastic Alien game, a game that is still visually stunning, horrifying and entertaining 10 years later, and it may well have saved the Alien franchise in video games. But whether you're a fan of the Alien franchise since you first saw a chestburster rip its way through John Hurt, or you're yet to experience your first facehugger, always remember to play with each other and play with yourself.